It was the cellar, the folk cellar, I think, the skiffle cellar, where you could go and hear what to me was fairly ghastly skiffle. Um, and I, oh, there was a folk and blues club, <laughs> and there was the Cranbourne. I, I cannot remember, honestly, the names of them all. They've sort of all, you know, blurred into one, really. And I remember my mum being very worried because I was going into coffee houses, you know, and she, they, they were dangerous places then. <laughs> um, I don't know what she thinks when she walks past the Starbucks nowadays. <laughs> but um, I can remember one night, I because I always wanted to go and hear folk song. I wasn't interested in skiffle. I, I you know, I didn't want to <laughs> sorry, so go and watch people sort of rubbing away at the washboards. And I didn't like the music and I didn't like Lonnie Donegan. I, because I, I knew by then that he didn't write those songs. You know, the songs he was singing came from Lead Belly, um, and that he was claiming copyright on them. And I knew that was wrong. And I just thought it was, I thought it was appalling. And then the way he sang, it was all so fast, you know, and it was exciting, and everybody loved it. And I didn't, and I felt sort of quite outside the whole thing. Um, to such an extent that one night when I went to one of the, it might have been at the Hungry, Hungry Eye, was it? Um, when Martin Windsor and Red Sullivan used to sing and it had a poster out saying sort of saying folk blues and skiffle and I went in for an evening and there wasn't any folk it was all well it wasn't even in blues either it was all skiffle and I got my lipstick out and crossed out folk on the poster and Martin Windsor caught me and said if you do that again you'll get knifed and he'd got his knife out dangerous bloke. So perhaps my mum was right about not going into skiffle, oh. skiffle cellars or coffee bars. You know, that's where you heard people like, you know, Bob Dylan who came over for the first time and sang there was, you know, allowed to play a couple of songs and didn't go down very well because we all loved Rambling Jack Elliot um, from the States, you know, a cowboy singer complete with cowboy hat, laconic speech, you know, really <laughs> attractive and we liked his music and we thought Bob Dylan was just a, a sort of lesser rambling jack you know so he wasn't too successful and I mean I also sang on a concert with Paul Simon when he came over in his early days when he was bottom of the bill at the Delaware Wall Pavilion in, in Pavilion in Bexhill on Sea and I was called I was Shirley Collins Britain's versatile young instrumentalist well, you know, I could play three or four chords on a banjo and guitar. But Paul Simon, bottom of the bill, didn't think much of him, didn't reckon he'd do very well. <laughs> now, I mean, I, you know, I did sort of go to Muddy Waters concerts. I know I saw Memphis Slim and, and Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee, you know, um, just wonderful performers and, you know, and good music as well. Of course, they're all very big in Paris as well, you know, there was a huge blues movement over there and, and so um, all those musicians were doing awfully well. Now, I think there was sort of quite a substantial interest here. And uh, at least that's how I remember it. The thing about being a folk artist of, is, is that you never make any money unless you're, you know, Joan Byers or, or Julie Felix.